My name is Yu Hang Ah. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Dr. David Liu at Sunny Binghamton and with my advisor, Dr. Hridesh Wajang. So uh, traditional type and effect system usually uh, compute in court and approximates the side effects of the expression. Uh, consider example uh, below, we have a pair cars which has two fields, first and second. And then it also has a method OP, uh, which will accept the library from the uh, input and call its method and assign the value to its two field first and second. And we would like to see whether the parallel ex uh, executions of the two codes uh, will be safe in concurrence on 9.7. And um, so a traditional effect system will compute the effects for the two expressions on the left and on the right. So we know that the effects of the first expression will write first and the second one will write second uh, because the library uh, code will be pure as shown above. So the um, static type system will type check this program because the effects of the two expressions are, are disjoint. And we, know that we all know that static effect system could be conservative and because of branching, recursion, and dynamic dispatch. So um, assuming the codes below, we compute the library functions with uh, if then else, and which says that it could be uh, either pure or effectful. And pure has no side effects as defined before. And effectful will have a side effect Y sum. So then the system, uh, traditional static system will be conservatively says that uh, the effects of the two expression on 99 will be non-disjoint uh, because F could be both pure and effectful. So it failed to type check. Um, however, we know that F could only be pure from line seven, and which should be safe to execute in concurrent. And you may argue that uh, context or path sensitive may help for it. Uh, but what about the dynamic features? Downloading the library from the internet at one time. Since we, know, uh, we don't know the exact information of F statically, we have to be conservatively uh, failed to type check this program. We have other dynamic features, which all defines uh, pure, which will all define uh, precise static effects reasoning. So uh, our solution, uh, we provide intentional effect. And our work is inspired by Harper and Morris' uh, intentional type polymorphism. And uh, in our system, we, uh, we introduce a new foundation to hybridize static and dynamic effects reasoning. So to we consider the previous code, we download the code from the internet, download the library function from the internet, and execute it uh, in concurrent on line three. Now the users can use the assuming uh, expression to qu query the one-time effect of the two expression. Um, so on line two, it says that assuming the one-time effects of the two expressions are disjoint, then we can execute the code on line three in concurrent for safe. Otherwise, we will sequentialize the code uh, as shown on line four. So the nice thing about our system is that um, the assuming expressions will use dynamic typing. So because uh, at one time, we have more uh, precise one-time information. Um, because like, for example, F will be specialized. Uh, therefore, we will gain more precise effects reasoning. And also, um, given the assum assumptions on 9.2, we know that uh, the, if the effects of the two expressions are uh, disjoint. So the codes on 9.3 will be safe. And our system uh, maintains the fully static uh, safety guarantee for the potential unsafe code on line three. So to illustrate, uh, assuming we uh, download an effectful library from the internet, and uh, at one time, the assuming expression will say that uh, the effect of the two expressions uh, will come fit, and the predicates uh, will fail, and we execute the code on line four, which is uh, desirable for uh, safety. On the other hand, if we download a pure uh, library function from the internet, uh, the assuming expression this time will say that the effects are disjoint. 
So the predicate is satisfied, and, uh, uh, and we enjoy safe parallelism. So to recap uh, in this work, uh, we, we provide a assuming expression where the users can inspect the one-time effect, use dynamic typing to gain more precise effect information. Uh, given the assumption, we can statically uh, guarantee the safety for the potential unsafe expressions. And also, we enjoy the safe concurrencies uh, in this scenario, which could be missed by a, a traditional conservative effect system. So, um, although we have a nice system, uh, we figure out that there could be a lot of challenges. The first one concerns about uh, soundness. Uh, we will show us later that uh, there could be a problem with static dynamic effect misalignment. Uh, we would also like to uh, design an efficient, uh, efficient dynamic typing. So to illustrate the potential uh, unsoundness problem, consider the code here. Uh, we have two pair object, P1 and P2, two variable, X and Y. Uh, X, X could be assigned to P1 or P2 or 9.4, same as Y. And now we have an assuming expression and a, do ex uh, and a pair expression on 9.7. So the question we want to ask is that shall we type check the code on 9.7, uh, given the assuming uh, on 9.6? Notice that the codes on 9.6 and on 9.7, they look exactly the same, except for the fact that uh, on 9.6, it assesses the uh, object X, while on 9.7, it assesses the object Y. So we would like to see what X and Y could be. X could be uh, P1 and P2 from 9.4, same as Y on 9.5. So a traditional uh, synthetic system will say that uh, since X and Y could be both P1 and P2, so their effect will be YP1 and YP2, uh, same as Y. So since the effects of the two expressions on 9.6 and on 9.7 are exactly uh, the same, it's very, t it's very tempting to type check the codes on 9.7. Now let's see the one-time behavior. Uh, on 9.6, Y right before line 6, X will be uh, P1 and Y will be P2 because we have already executed the code on 9.4 and 9.5. So the, assu uh, the assuming says that uh, the two expression has non -disjoint, uh, have disjoint effect because uh, those two expression assets disjoint here. Uh, so the predicates on 9.6 will be satisfied. So we go to line seven. Uh, unfortunately, the parallel code on 9.7 is unsafe because they assess the same element P2. So the lesson we, uh, we learned here is that we should not type check the code on 9.7. Otherwise, it, uh, it could end up in one-time database, which is uh, undesired. So uh, the root cause of the problem is that uh, the static type system will say that X and Y could be both P1 and P2. And so it computes the effects for the two expressions, uh, which are the same. While at one time, X and Y could only be either P1 or P2, but not both. So given that, um, we use bounded existential types to solve the problem. Um, here we say that X could be P1 or P2. It's a sum pair Q0 bounded by these two objects. Same as Y. We, we compute the effects for the two expression. Now this time, since uh, we cannot prove that Q0 equals to Q1, so we cannot type check this code. We failed the type checking as desired. On the other hand, if we change the code on 9.7, uh, we change it to x dot first equal to 3. Uh, we compute the effects for the two expressions on 9.6 and 7 again this time. And since uh, this time the effects are exactly the same, uh, we can type check this program as desired. Uh, so to recap, we use 
uh, bounded existential typing to maintain soundness, uh, which prevents static and dynamic effects misalignment. So another challenge is to uh, design an efficient dynamic typing. So a naive uh, strategy to dis uh, design a dynamic typing strategy will be to uh, construct a typing derivation tree at one time uh, entirely, which could be uh, expensive. So our observation is that um, the static derivation tree and the dynamic derivation tree are exactly the same, except for the free variables. So then we compute the static, uh, we, we use the static derivation tree to compute the effect. Um, so as shown on line four, we attach the static computed effects to the source code. And at one time, when X will be specialized uh, to P1, uh, we substitute the original static information with P1 uh, to divide the final effect. So we kept, uh, to design an efficient dynamic typing here, uh, we pre-compute the effects using static uh, typing. And at one time, we just uh, substitute the free variable with the um, known one. So now I would like to mention about the nice property our system have. Uh, so we maintain the traditional type soundness, despite the highly precision we uh, provide. The second property is about trace soundness. By trace here, I mean that uh, the actual memory assets when executing the expression itself. So this property says that uh, if, the, if our system says that uh, expression will have side effects sigma, then the actual trace will be bounded by sigma. The final property is about the differential alignment strategy for uh, designing uh, the dynamic typing. Uh, we showed in a paper that uh, uh, well-typed programs always have uh, co corresponding uh, optimization. Also, the optimized program and the original programs behave the same, that is, uh, they both diverge or they both provide the same value. So just now I show a, a pair application for our effect system. It turns out that our system is also applicable to um, many other applications, for example, GUI. So in a GUI applications, you have, uh, usually we have one master thread. It also spawn a bunch of uh, background thread. But uh, GUI system usually require that the background thread do not access the UI element, for example, J, uh, J label. So then the GUI uh, programmer can use our system to inspect the effect of the uh, background thread. And um, if they don't access the UI element, they can be spawned uh, to the background thread. Other application includes information security program optimization uh, memorization. Uh, please refer to our paper for more details. Now come to the related work. Uh, our work is inspired by uh, Harper and Morris's paper, Intentional Type Polymorphism. Uh, in their work, they allowed a typecast light uh, one-time type analysis while well, we use dynamic typing to gain precise information. And, uh, intentional type polymorphisms focus on uh, type, uh, type reasoning, and our work focus on effects reasoning. Our work is also related to a, a more general forms of uh, uh, hybrid typing, uh, but our work uh, focus on effects reasoning. Our work is also related to gradual effects, in gradual effects, uh, they use known and unknown effects to type check the programs while we use polymorphism. And gradual effects use effects monitoring while we use dynamic typing to gain uh, precise information. Let's see the implications. Uh, for the following code, we use polymorphic, uh, we type the library functions on line three polymorphically. And since we use po uh, polymorphism, so the code on line 10, the parallelisms, could be type-checked statically, uh, same as the code on line 5. Uh, notice that if we uh, use the unknown to 
uh, type the library function on 9.3, we cannot guarantee the safety uh, statically on 9.10. So in summary, um, in this work, we have a new language design, the assuming expression. The users can use the assuming expressions to inspect the effects of the uh, expressions at one time to get more precise information. Um, we use dynamic typing to provide such precise effect reasoning. Uh, we also uh, provide fully static safety guarantees for the potential unsafe code. Uh, to maintain soundness, we use bounded extensions. And finally, to devise uh, efficient dynamic typing, uh, we compute the effects statically, and at one time, uh, we substitute the free variable with the specialized one, and which we call a differential alignment strategy. That's all for my presentation. Thank you very much. Can you, can you say a little bit more about what the, uh, how the types specify the effects or how precise are the effect specifications that you're using? Say that again. I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. So you, you use types that characterize the effects of, of operations, right? Uh, we use both type and effect. So but how precise are the effect specifications? Because in your initial motivation, it, it was basically just a binary information, right? You said the class is effectful or not effectful. Is it that the level of granularity or? Effectful or, if, oh no, no, no. So effectful or non-effectful are the name of the class. But actually the side effects could be, uh, the side effects include with white memory heap. So it will, uh, it will be traditional uh, memory width and white. It will read the memory region, uh, which region you, you will read or which, memory region you will write. And those will be specified for every method? Uh, either, either it could be specified by the programmer or it could be uh, inferred from the type system. OK. Um, any other questions? Did I answer your question? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. No questions? Well, then, uh, thanks again. Oh. Oops, sorry. Ah. Uh, I just had one question that wasn't entirely clear to me, which is um, you use dynamic typing, right, to get, uh, to be able to do a, a, a runtime check, right? We first uh, devise the dynamic effect of the expression and then check the, whether the effect are conflict or not in this uh, parallel application. Right, and so dynamically, do you what do you discover? So you discover well the receiver type, the dynamic type of the receiver, and the fields you access. Right, is that the? So statically, uh, the receiver L here, uh, it is unknown because we download the library function at one time, so it will be unknown. But at one time, yes. F will be specialized to like. If that's for, if you download an if that's for library. Right, so but I, I'm just asking, I'm just wondering if you use only the dynamic type of the receivers that occur in these expressions, or if you also dynamically consider the, the, the fields that are actually accessed. Uh, both, so all, okay. the, all right. the free variables. Okay, right. Okay, that clarifies it, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.